Well, good afternoon. It's Wednesday and it's four o'clock. So it's yet again time for Made in Quakes TV. Um, I'm delighted if you're able to join us this afternoon. Um, and I'm hoping to be joined by Dave Cross. Now, Dave Cross is an old civilian who left. I'm just going to invite him. He left school in 1996. So he's a contemporary of at least one of the guests that we've had on. So I've invited him to join us. This worked really well in practice. And in, fa in fact, here he is. Wow, perfect again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, slickest, the slickest beginning of anyone we've had, I think. That's, that's worked really well. So good afternoon, Dave. Very welcome to Made in Quakes TV. Um, and I haven't even uh, properly introduced you yet. So this is Dave Cross, left Quakes in 1996. He is a civil engineer who began his career working in the highways, but now works in defence. And we're going to get him to tell us, well, tell us as much as he's allowed to tell us, but tell us all about that um, in a moment. But if we take, if we go back to 1996, um, you walked out the door, what happened next? Um, so, uh, took a step into the wide world of civil and structural engineering, doing a degree in uh, Manchester. Uh, you missed as was, now is University of Manchester. Um, came out with uh, a degree, a master's in engineering, unfortunately, and um, stepped into sort of the, the big wide world of work and uh, was started off work down in uh, London as a sort of a, a highway inspector, site supervisor, managing delivery of works, making sure that the, the good people of this nation sort of got to work on time and all the rest of it. Um, was, was that something you wanted to do or... Did that something when you started looking around for jobs you thought that looks interesting or was that they'll give me a job I'll start there what what where was that where did that fit in in the um, plan I I took, took a decision about sort of which sector to go into and um, structures was very sort of analytical mathematical and I was never any really good at that but actually an opportunity arose in highways to sort of do a lot of different stuff um so yeah sort of uh picking up in defects manholes falling in and responding to people ringing in and going why is this happening and all the rest of it and um managing small projects so um one of the sort of the, the projects i delivered was a, a signalized junction improvement at the top of wood lane in one wood in london mm -hmm. um which was the home of bbc television i was gonna say i recognize the address um, yeah when you sort of lifted up the slabs, the paving slabs brushed off a little bit of sand. That was the main fibre optics going into BBC. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so, Spent so carefully then. Yeah. yeah. Um, from there, moved into some more highways design sphere and moved back to Yorkshire, God's own country. And um, uh, w quickly went from being sort of a design engineer to sort of managing projects to managing a, a route improvements, uh, a, a route network um, manager. So sort of managing the improvements up and down the a A64 from York to Scarborough. Mm -hmm. um, I can safely say that I've um, improved the bus stops up and down, the bus laybys up and down the A64. Um, you. you're, you're responsible for that because <laughs> you've got that on your, on your lifetime achievements. That's brilliant. Exactly. We're, and we're all very grateful for it. Thank you very much. <laughs> you travel but, along that road. Uh, and the sort of the, from there, um, I could see the sort of the benefit of what we do as civil engineers, and sort of I wanted to see bigger, bigger projects, bigger, bigger infrastructure projects. Um, so changed, changed companies. Um, starting to work for a company called Mott McDonald in Sheffield um, and then um, got involved with a project down near Doncaster. Uh, the, uh, it was then called FARS, Finley and Rosington Relief Road Scheme. Bit of a mouthful, but it linked the, okay. M it linked the M18 out to um, Robin Hood Airport, Doncaster Sheffield Airport. Um, so I was involved at the early stages of that, so on the project management sphere, so um, basically managing the design teams, managing the transportation planners, managing the finances, managing the, the council uh, and taking that forward. Um, and um, fortunately, unfortunately, I didn't actually see that being delivered because I moved from um, Yorkshire down to the, sort of the Bristol area. 
right? Um, which was my sort of first um, sort of dalliance into sort of defence because I was doing a, a car park design for a, 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 a an infrastructure right. project down in uh, Yeovilton, which I spent quite a lot of time down there. Um, and my role expanded from being just designing the infrastructure part to taking on the project management of small areas, small packages of work, mm-hmm. um, to basically by the end of the, the job, I was um, the project manager on a hundred million pounds of defense infrastructure improvements. Um, ranging from absolutely everything to from um, accommodation to medical dental facility to gyms uh, to uh, QM uh, facilities so QM as in Q uh, in the Bond film yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but not the not the sort of like the techno gadgets that they have um, to all sorts um, every day was every every day uh, I, the reason well, one of the reasons why I like the job at the minute is every day I go to work, go to site, it is a bit like going to work in an air show because there's um, helicopters flying around, there's airplanes flying around, there's all sorts, big tonka toys going around. <laughs> Great fun. Um, I mean, the one thing, so following, following the delivery of that project, um, I moved over to delivering uh, the Dunker, which is... Right. Uh, the try. You, you're still at Mark McDonald's at this point, but subcontracted to do MOD work. Yeah, correct, correct. And with that project, it was uh, the the, the try service underwater escape training facility. Again, it's another uh, mouthful, but mm-hmm. as MOD, they give it everything gets project names. So this was the dunker, um, <laughs> which. Basically, it was uh, three pools uh, with going down into the ground with a water table of uh, 400 mil below ground. Um, and all the uh, interesting nuances of trying to deliver it when you've got sort of um, one, of the, one of the world's biggest arch- archaeological finds right underneath the doorstep. Um, and... Um, yeah, that was that was a really interesting project. I mean, the one and thing... that's quite a shift from what you've done before. That was, mm. was the, quite a lot of thing, new things to learn, and uh, oh yeah, uh, so, uh, <laughs> it's quite a steep learning curve, I imagine. That's that's a shift from from highways and from and road road and uh, uh, sort of projects. So getting up to speed with the TLAs is just absolutely the, the military are full of the the sort of the acronyms, three letter acronyms. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. I mean, the, the one thing that the the one thing that I take to heart when I'm delivering projects, and this is why I've sort of I didn't actually fully anticipate it when I went into civil engineering, is mm-hmm. that actually the, the the projects that I'm delivering now, I can see the benefit from um, the people that are going through the training facilities, the people. Mm. That, Breaking out of the squadron office buildings, the people that are, because they can do all the training, they can do all the flying that they can um, in a nice, warm, fuzzy environment it, at home. Um, and when they go out to theatre to go and support foreign parties, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mm-hmm. they go and do the un, uh, uh, things that I wouldn't want to do. Um, I've given them the best facility that they can train in, so that they come home at the end of the day. And Which, yeah, is the is it, the main is the main event really? That's the thing you, we want to happen most exactly. Exactly, and so that's the thing that I every day I go to work, I put my heart and soul into it because I know that's the outcome. And I've I've now branched into different projects where. Um, Oh, you can, I can't talk about what we do, but it's fun and good. Uh, <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> so, so but, in general terms, I know you've recently changed, or relatively recently changed yeah. to a new firm. Um, and and is, is that some of the same? Obviously, if it's, it's current work, you can't talk about it, but is it the same kind of things, or is that new challenges as well? It's, um, it's similar work, in so much as it, uh, where I am at the minute, it's project management of defence infrastructure projects. Mm-hmm. However, 
every day is a challenge um i mean you you go in and there are different um there's different end users so there's different requirements there's different mm -hmm. complexities of working in different military establishments there's different um contractual arrangements that we're sort of working with that some some contractors are very good and understand defense and go here we are yeah let's go others are kind of going mm, what the hell I'm sure put on here. <laughs> and yeah sort of go forward um so is every day the same no not at all not at all i mean um that's <laughs> Just this last couple of weeks, I uh, like um, I was sort of come back off Christmas holiday, nice easy week. Um, the week, the, the first day that the contractor was on board, my phone started ringing at seven thirty in the morning whilst I was having my coffee and watching the news, sort of thing. And I'm just like, oh my god, what's happening now? <laughs> so, um, yeah, every day is different. I mean, the the sort of the uh, yeah, it, it's just immense and you can get involved from um something as small as um a single accommodation block across uh, just around the corner um to sort of um some of the major uh, infrastructure projects where you are basically going into um Catrick garrison and you are remodeling the entire uh, accommodation and infrastructure and buildings and everything else and it's yeah anything between and you could be working next to um so one of the the projects that we did at yeovilton the new build um squadron office building we had to flatten the existing building and rebuild uh rebuild a new one um except the the slight nuance with that was um, it was right next to an active dispersal. And so we had... What exactly? Uh, so uh, where helicopters uh, turn and burn. So basically they get dragged out of the hangars, put on a spot, and they start sort of doing the final checks before they go off to do exercise and sorting. Right. So windy then? <laughs> yeah. A <little> yeah. <laughs> bit and um, uh, it was that's just my that was my first sort of dalliance into defense and i was like what the hell have i got myself into so yeah, of, <laughs> like, yeah i, I mean, want to build things what's going on here yeah <laughs> and, wow and actually i think it's it's amazing because uh, civil and i take it back then to sort of civil engineering as a career and i've just been writing something um uh to sort of like uh, to sort of showcase what we do and mm actually civil engineering as a sector um is so varied because you could be doing and uh, my experience has been i've worked on nottingham tram project i've done bus mm -hmm. laybys up and down the a64 i've done 100 million pound improvement schemes i've worked on simple junction improvements and that's almost all all those projects are running at the same time mm. so wow. Yeah, sort of like you from a it kind of works for my brain because i kind of i like to have lots of things going around at the same time um then taking that and stepping into the project management sphere where you sort of you're managing multiple projects at that sort of level yeah. um i think it's fantastic and and the sort of the the benefit that i bring as a i i, I liken it to there so within my organization and the one i was in before we have project management sectors right uh, so these are big companies these are big companies aren't they with, with lots of things going on yeah, yeah. Uh, we're sort of sixteen thousand strong global company that has got turnover of billions of pounds a year yeah. Dax. <laughs> there's a lot going on yeah, yeah. So, and you're able to get involved with with some yeah. of it or, or a lot of it but but there's there's always new challenges i'm yeah. guessing especially if you're worldwide Exactly. And, and the one good thing is, um, so in terms of project management, you, 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 as a technical project manager with a civil engineering background, you're, it's inbred that you're challenging and you're, it's inbred that you're, 
um, questioning and work out want to work out the technical solution as well as the sort of how to do it. Um, whereas I think people that come in from a, I've been to university and done project management as a degree, they need to learn that, and it, it, it's not as e it's not a second nature to them. Um, I'm, you touched on sort of like the the major companies. I mean, the one thing that I've found in the companies I've worked for is the opportunities that are available to an individual to mm -hmm. they go actually do you know what i want to go and work in america france germany dubai and have having a company that is that big there are the opportunities to do that so so actually getting and this was i think this was going to be one of the questions in a minute is so sort of like the the what would you tell people is actually do as best you can at the stage you're at so do as best you can at your a levels because it mm. makes the job easier do as best you can at university because it makes getting into a job easier get as many qualifications under your belt as you can because it it proves it opens the next door yeah. and and actually do you know what <laughs> pick a company that actually is open honest and willing to sort of develop the sort of the, the personnel that they take on um, mm. because that's that goes miles um, for personal job satisfaction and and actually yeah if you can if you can turn around and say actually I want to go and uh, for me uh, my my company is an American company that uh, uh, started in the oil fields um, mm -hmm. so if I wanted to go and work in petrochemicals in the next six months I could <laughs> find an opportunity and go and do that wow so there's, yeah. there's that flexibility but of course as you say that the opening the doors is great but you have to be able to step through them and have have relevant experience and take the opportunity oh, yeah. which you know you, you clearly have i mean if, if we can believe it's 26 years since you left school that's you know that's amazing <laughs> to say it quickly um but you've obviously you know clearly achieved a, ph a phenomenal amount in that but if we if we have a little look back because mm. we started like sort of looking forwards but you know the, that skill set that you've developed and taking those opportunities. Let, let's um, let's reminisce a little bit from your time in school. I think your last three years here were my first three, yeah. um, way back in the nineties. <laughs> you you I think you spent your whole career at, at the school. Did you did we in the juniors as well? Did you go yeah. right through? So, so you started as a as a youngster. What, I, what memories have you got? Just sort of talk us through your school career in, in sort of in a bit about like I think you were involved with quite a lot of things. Is my memory. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, whatever you can, you're allowed to say. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a long time ago, but so yeah, I, you, you, I'm sure you've got some fond memories. <laughs> so I um, actually started uh, my Quakes career um, in the girls' high school, in the mm -hmm. girls' junior school. Um, then I sort of moved over to uh, Quakes Juniors, Quakelets. Was that with Mrs. Tolliver back in those days? Was it? Was uh, it then, or even before Mrs. Tolliver? Can you remember? Mr. Bissett was the headmaster then. No, but uh, sorry, at Mulberry House at, um, oh, at the girls' juniors. Was, was I, that Mrs. Tolliver in those days? You can't remember. It's too long ago. <laughs> I, <laughs> Might have been. So, many people, many people um, will have come through with Mrs. Tolliver in those days. And it's Mulberry yeah. House. Uh, it's um, the pre-prep now. My son's there. But, um, so it's evolved, but yeah. I, I remember um, having shorts and the, the little cap at the juniors. Yeah. Um, which got banned because all the senior school kids uh, <laughs> them on the rail tracks at Westgate Station. Um, then I went into no. senior school and I was with uh, Mrs. Austin, the biology teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Clough, and uh, Mr. Cholowa was the sort of PE teacher, and uh, George Carosi was my biology teacher, and Terry yeah. Spencer, and those sort of famous stalwarts of Quags. Absolutely, and it was it was quite interesting. Cause my my brother came through Quegs ten years above me, and so when I sort of got into the senior school, it, everybody kind of looked at me and went, "Ah, uh, uh, you're his brother, <laughs> are you?" <laughs> was that a good thing or was that not so good? <laughs> Fortunately, we were both quite different. So um, All yeah, right. <laughs> I mean the, the the one thing that I. I sort of remember from school or sort of took from school my time at school was the education was one thing and mm. 
whatever, however you progress through school, you'll come out with decent grades uh, or grades that you're uh, right for you. Um, and but it was the actual, it was all of the extracurricular stuff. I mean. I remember shooting with uh, Cluffy. I remember playing hockey with Mr. Binney and Mr. East. Uh, and, uh, I remember uh, going caving with Mr. Mason and all those extra stuff and doing DV and that sort of, there's a sort of the, the phenomenal amount of sort of extracurricular stuff which enriched us as children, mm -hmm. and boys and young adults. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I was fortunate enough to go into the sort of like um, I become a senior prefect, um, mm. and actually the sort of like the the professionalism and the sort of like the the, the networking that that gave. Little did I realise would stand me in good stead for things that I'm doing now, and sort of being able to being able to talk to um, guests and uh, things when they came i mean uh, we had um terry Waite came to do a, I can't remember yeah. you, terry Waite came to do a speech at uh, school and he did i remember that that was fantastic meeting him as a person and sort of listening to what he said i mean, the, the the one pinnacle of my school career was um i was fortunate to be in school when it was the catacentenary i remember um yes that uh, lovely day when uh, the, the, sadly the Queen, as was, came to visit the school and mm -hmm. I was then sort of um, language lab with the headphones on listening to Mrs Firth talking and then this entourage came through and, and walked past me and I was like... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the Queen's there, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I, I think just the sort of... The, the, the amazing amount of opportunities for enrichment uh, were fantastic. And I, I sort of look back and think, actually, I did, uh, uh, I did so much. And then I carried that on when I went into university and I was doing, I was playing first team hockey and all sorts of stuff and doing, working in the bar and doing socials and all sorts of fantastic stuff that if I wasn't, or if I hadn't been um, given the opportunities at school to sort of develop and nurture and, and encourage that sort of extrovert. Um, yeah, that side of yourself. Personality. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, I think it, it, it would have, I would have been a different type of person, I think. Yeah, and, and that's brilliant to hear. And you, you mean, you, the way you talk about school is really warm and you've obviously got great memories and, you know, I say, that those were my first few years, and I remember some of those things you talked mm -hmm. about. Mr. Mason actually said today, make sure you ask him about potholing and caving, make <laughs> sure he remembers that. I said, oh, he's already well, talked about it, we'll definitely get that in. And that was, you know, he used to do, he used to run that then, back in the day. And, yeah, I mean, I know, it, it's probably been risk assessed out of existence nowadays, but <laughs> no, we still do do it on um, on the residential and stuff. But um, yeah, well, I know that that was going on. And, and as you say, taking those opportunities and, and getting, being developed as a person mm. is, is, probably something at school that i mean would you agree with this you don't necessarily recognize the value of it until later until you till you see how other people do it and you you're getting on in your job and in your in your career and like oh actually yeah i could do that and oh actually yeah I'm, i am comfortable in that situation where not everybody is is that is that something you've experienced because others have talked about that i think it gives being in a being in a big school where actually you have that amount of extracurricular activities you've got you you could be a team player you could be uh, a soloist on uh, chess or music or anything like that mm -hmm. um but it's it's realizing and finding your inner strengths and in and understanding your inner weaknesses um mm -hmm. and actually i think i, don't know, I will raise the caving bit um Go on then. <laughs> that, that was for me that was fantastic because i'm naturally adventurous or and certainly back then i was i had a a, a much higher a much lower sense of fear yeah uh, <laughs> i think we all did when we were younger <laughs> and um mr mason and i sort of started doing this probably was a bit wrong nowadays but we were starting to do more um adventurous potholing by doing um rope work and mm. 
things like that. And it pushed my limits as an individual. Um, and actually I sort of said, right, well, actually to break through that barrier, I need to do some training. I need to do some more learning. Mm. Uh, um, Mr. Mason said, okay, pop, uh, and it happened when I was on school holidays and things like that. Um, he said, pop round, um, I'll be in school, pop round to the school and I'll, we'll set up a pitch on the fire escape of the science block. So the big sort of black um, metal stairs that come out. Well, the there's back. another building there now, but I know what you mean, where it used to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I, I sort of said, brilliant, that's perfect. And I just spent an afternoon going up and down the ropes. And it was hilarious because... Um, kids had walked past at the end of the school day and friends had walked up uh, the sort of the road up to um <laughs> what's <track>. he doing <laughs> sort of like dangling off a rope somewhere so um but it's things like that that actually sort of give you that inner strength and actually the, the sort of understanding that you can push the boundaries and mm. i think that at the time it was just a bit of fun because i was going down holes and i was buying lots of Gucci kit and all sorts of other stuff. Um, but actually, yeah, looking back, it set the groundwork for the skills and sort of um, resilience almost mm. that you need as a, a professional and as an adult um, to to succeed, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's brilliant to hear that that's the way it's worked for you and, that, that, and those are your memories. Um, when you think back to the time since then, um, what what are you most proud of that you've achieved? What what what's the what would you say so far in your career? Obviously, there's there's more to go. You're not done yet. But what <laughs> what stands out particularly of things that um, um, you know, did that? I think I think there's probably lots. Sounds in, like <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, it's a difficult question because mm -hmm. I mean I I I look back at um the first um junction improvement that i did that i, that I was responsible for mm -hmm. um, even though a team of designers and proper geeky people sort of did all the fancy um traffic signal stuff and all the rest of it but i actually delivered it on site with a team of other contractors yeah it's your name attached to it you're, yeah. you're the man yeah and i still drive up and down the the m1 and i see the lights at junction um, 36 and go i did that i did that <laughs> and it's those sorts of things and it, it's the yeah. as i say the sort of like the, the delivering the dunker and and actually seeing it in action and seeing going back after and seeing people actually being trained in it and actually coming out and it, it's it's that that's doing the, its job yeah sense of pride on that um I'm sure um, and the flip side of that is, what what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced? When when has it been difficult? If you if you're happy to talk about that, or when 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 are the things where you you know you had the steepest learning, as it were? Yeah, I think when you, I think when you step out of your comfort zone, mm. and you're not quite prepared for it, that's when you've got the learning curve, and it's the biggest challenge. And I think, fortunately for me, I think. When I've, I, uh, throughout my career, I've had sort of like two or three uh, blocks where I get to a point and then I go, I need a new challenge. And so you sort of like, you look around and go, actually, yeah, I need to do this. Um, and I think for me, it was when I, after I first, so my first position, my first job was with a company called WSP. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd reached a point where, then the next step up was blocked for me. And right. So I had to take a step out of a comfort zone that I'd, I'd known for the last nine years and make a jump to a different company and different, and, and it was different projects and it was different this and it different. And I think that's the biggest challenge is actually going, right, I need this to progress my career. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough. It's going to be need a lot of learning to sort of, upskill we always talk about upskill nowadays of uh, and but actually you've just got to you've just got to 
you've just got to make the, take the step, make the leap. Uh, exactly, and it's, and it's that faith in yourself as well, and that it's going to be okay because I'm yeah. fine where I am now, but I know that I need yeah. I need more, or I need something different, or and you know that that is, and some people don't do that, and so you're right, it's <laughs> that it's that suspension of disbelief, or right, I'm going to go for it, and yeah. and it might and it might not work out, but you, you have to you have to have faith in that, yeah. yeah. To help back to the the cave in, Mister Mister Mason, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be delighted. <laughs> you, stood off, you stood at the top of a pitch. You've got all your gears on. You've got been buddy checked. You've got your rope. You've got your everything is rated to sort of one and a half tons, two tons, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You're sixty kilos wet, sort of thing, um, and you've got to be have that confidence in yourself. Have that confidence in your own abilities and the kit that's around you and the support network that's around you to lean back and let go almost <laughs> and, and drop into it, the dark and yeah and hope it's right and that's a really good analogy i think that's, you've got both yeah. those experiences to see the see the parallels and um, what's i say this every week half an hour has gone like that it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm really we've, you know really enjoying talking to you but what's next what do you you know you said you've you've not been at this particular post very mm -hmm. long this is relatively new so you know may, maybe you're not even thinking about what's next but what what's the sort of you know e even in outline the, the next yeah. step in your in your rather impressive career would you say so um i'll take a sort of a, a, a marginal step back so mm -hmm. um when i was a, uh, my previous company was from mcdonald as, as we touched on earlier mm -hmm. i've got to a point where again it was the next step up was kind of somebody else had just come in. So it's not going to be, uh, and I was ready for the next challenge. Um, I've been with Mott's for mm, 10 years, nine years, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I sort of thought, actually, I've, I've got a junction here. Let's, let, let's take a different path. So I joined Tetra Tech, who are the new, the new company, the current company, um, but I took a little bit of a step down. Mm -hmm. I was um, looking after uh, divisional sector roles, um, and I took a bit of a step down to just be a, a senior project manager again, just to sort of reground myself. Um, and funnily enough, um, the reason why I was writing about sort of what we do in, in project management, um, there's two opportunities have come up within the company to... Mm -hmm. um, be a, a south so looking after project management within the south of england um and there is also a head of practice uh, for project management job that's come up so um i've, I've I, had a, I had a very brief chat with my wife at lunchtime and <laughs> eyeing both of those up so I, I her as well hopefully she's heard <laughs> but, so i think she'll be watching and finding out with the rest of us yeah <laughs> but um so hopefully it'll be more into the sort of like the the uh practice leadership type of role because actually right. where i'm sort of thinking is is my bent and actually i've got a lot of it as you say I've, as i say i've got a lot of experience that i can bring on and nurture and mentor um, yeah. um more junior staff and work with the business to sort of drive the sort of the strategic change so it's um yeah so i think that's that's where i'm heading i need to um i need to finish this contract at the minute which is quite yeah. But uh, yeah, we will get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, so, if I'm if I'm in the audience today watching and I'm thinking civil engineering, yeah, I might fancy that. Have you got any specific advice for for the youngsters and even and the parents of youngsters yeah. um, about about being an engineer generally, perhaps, but specifically civil engineering? Because to me, and, and I, I didn't do engineering at school. I probably could have. I was mathematical, all those kind of things, but. But I don't think I really understood at the time what engineering was. Yeah. It might have suited me better than a than a maths degree. And it's mm. it's a, you know if I'd had better education and I'd done more research in those days, maybe I'd have had a different path. But what what's you know what do you think people people yeah. who might be interested might need to know from your perspective? Obviously, you've got a lot of experience now. I think the um, I think engineering as a profession, we'll call it that. Yes, is massive. Mm. Um, I think the one thing that my I took from 
when I was choosing my GCSEs and all the rest of it, um, I, I took my, I sat down with my dad as all, the kids on the, on the, that are watching and the sort of the parents that are watching. Um, I sat down with my dad and said, look, I want to be an engineer. He went, okay, do some research, look at all the different sectors of engineering and choose one, do sort of pros, cons, SWOT analysis, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, um, and I did. And I, I looked at mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, um, civil and structural engineering, petrochemicals. Sadly, I didn't go into electrical engineering and I, otherwise I would have been much, much more <laughs> rich than I am now. But, yes, possibly. <laughs> but, and then from that, look at the universities and then sort of start going through that. Um, but uh, the one thing that I do, um, I did enjoy and that sort of galvanised my sort of thoughts on which sector of engineering. I did work experience. I was going to ask you about work experience. Yeah. I did. So I did, um, when I was uh, 16, um, mm -hmm. I went over to um, Hickson and Welsh in Castleford. Yeah. I don't know if I'm still there or not, but um, <laughs> I, I followed, I, I sort of shadowed their civil, uh, some of their civil engineering team around. And I was exposed to the mechanical side, the electrical side, the petrochemical, the, the sort of the chemical side of engineering and also the civil side. And I was like, actually, yeah, I, 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 that's, that's where I want to be. That looks great for me. That, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever turned back. I know I've turned around to, so I've got yeah. um, two daughters. Uh, one is in her first year of university this year and my other good daughter... lord that makes me feel old but yes <laughs> of course <laughs> well so, what's she doing uh psychology mm -hmm. manchester um yep. and i've got a, a, a younger daughter who's doing a gcse's now and so she'll be 16 in august mm -hmm. and i've sort of tried to sort of guide them in the same sort of thought process sort of saying yeah well what do you want to do what do you want what do you want to do when you're older what do you want to do when you're grown up sort of thing yeah. um and the the kids my kids my daughters went yeah. through well my youngest at first she wanted a, to be a gymnastics coach then she wanted to be a physiotherapist then she wanted to be something else and then she then the sort of the, the the careers have just done a sort of full 360 sort of thing and the one thing that I would say is get as much education as you can, as like I said earlier, get as yeah, sure. much and when you can. Um, and actually, um, there there are routes to careers that don't need to go to through university. So mm. um, I'm in engineering, and actually, one of the big things that all companies look at is apprenticeships. So actually, and, and I'm a great advocate for that because I'm a, a parent from Yorkshire and I don't want to pay it for <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a different route and yeah um, but, absolutely. But if I, I look at kids nowadays that potentially could go to university like I did uh doing a four or five year course with all the associated mm. debt it's different now isn't it from uh, from those days yeah yeah and um they've got to pay that back or parents mm. have got to pay mm -hmm. um but actually going through a different route of an apprenticeship, you're doing the work whilst you're learning and somebody else pays for it. So, <laughs> Which, you know, in the modern world, that's not to be sniffed at. And, and actually, we're finding year on year the apprenticeship route is becoming yeah. more attractive, particularly in certain sectors. So engineering, finance, particularly, oh, yeah. and some others. And I, and I think you're right. It's, it's not something, it, it kind of went away and it wasn't supported, but it's back and it's, and it's, it's a great route. We've had we've had several boys in recent yeah. times do that. And actually, there's no there's no barriers now. I mean, it needs it needs you as an individual to be more um, motivated to get it because companies do play quite a big stall on. Actually, you need to be getting top grades and mm. the top sort of thing. Otherwise, we're going to cut the funding. Yeah. Um, we but, want to buy a good one. We're not paying. We're not paying all our money yeah. if you're not going to work hard. Exactly. I mean that, but that's fair enough. I, I've worked with a lot of the apprenticeship apprentices 
um, in. I was going to ask you that. Is is that something you, in your role have you encountered? You know, yeah. you're involved in hiring and firing, and, and yeah, and, and, yeah, well, not firing. <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> hiring but, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're so good, you don't need to fire them. You train them so well, so <laughs> that's that's all sorted. They move on. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it, it is, um, and actually, it is something that I've been involved in. Is I've I've been involved in the recruitment of a cross section of staff and where, uh, uh, and a cross section of disciplines. So. Uh, and and actually, the CV is one thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I've done um, graduate recruitment where everybody comes out of. I mean, for us it was when I was uh, in Bristol, so we had you um, Yui as the sort of the, the main catchment. Yeah. Uh, everybody, all of the CVs were coming through with firsts, and this was the project, and this was the project, and, and it was like, okay. But what what differentiates you as a person? Yeah, yeah I, I, between all these clever people, you got to you got to meet them and you got to see what skills and, and talents they've got. I'm sure. And I've done I've done interviews um, for um, some jobs that I've gone to sort of seconded into, mm -hmm. and very much, um, how do you do this? What would you do that in this situation? And it's very uh, it's a sort of like a competency based assessment. And mm. they're really difficult. They are yeah. really difficult. They, you, you've got to have, be nailed on that you know exactly what they're asking for. Um, and my interview style is completely different. I just want to, yeah, okay, you've got, you've got all the qualifications. Tell me about you. Yeah. How, how do you manage people? How do you sort of manage projects? What do you do in a design area, arena? How do you get to know them as a person are they going to fit in the team and that's that gets more out of the person because actually you're sort of finding the, about them and you put them at ease as well and you get more out of it yeah so i think the and this goes back to the sort of like the extracurricular absolutely <laughs> just back to what you were talking about earlier exactly <laughs> is just sort of build up a, a repertoire, a CV for things outside of what you're there for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the comfort zone, the, to take yourself out of your comfort zone was, was yeah. what I said earlier, I think. And that's brilliant advice, you know, stretch yeah. and challenge yourself whenever you can. And, and those opportunities will, will keep coming. And, and you know, as, as you've proven, um, that's, that's brilliant. Um, we're at <laughs> we're at forty three minutes. It's it's absolutely fantastic. I'll talk to you all day. We're, we're probably better wind it up soon. Um, if you, I always ask everybody this: if you could go back in time, all all the way back to to nineteen ninety squags, and and tap young Dave on the shoulder, um, and give him a piece of advice, what would that advice be? What would you say to to your younger self, knowing what you know now, if anything? I think two things. One's a serious one. One's a funny one. <laughs> No, it's just, I, I thought about it this afternoon. Um, the serious one is keep an eye on the future mm. because, uh, and keep an eye on what's happening sort of a year down the line, two years down the line, five years down the line, because actually that's, that's where you, it's easy to turn the Titanic if, if you sort of do it in gentle movements mm. or do it on a sixpence, you're not going to do it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Keep an eye on the future. Yeah. Uh, the second one is a bit of a silly one, and actually, uh, keep keep warm and keep keep mobile because actually, when you get older, it things start easing up. <laughs> <laughs> keep moving. Lots of exercise. <laughs> yes, that's great advice at all ages, I think. But and again, <laughs> these are the things you learn as you get older, of course, um, as we all do. Um, Dave, it's been absolutely brilliant to talk to you, um, and, and, and thank, thank you. you so much for for sharing so much you, you obviously um clearly love what you do clearly very successful at it and that's brilliant to see um i know you live down in the west country but if you ever if you ever are back in yorkshire whenever whenever you come up this way i don't know if you still have family up here do you, do you ever yeah. get back to to this part of the world yeah and I, I i must admit i think i must go and see our design team in leeds sometime soon you so. must that's very important <laughs> that you do that and when you do Please get in touch and come in and visit us in school because it'd be great to see you. Come and have lunch and catch up. And, and there yeah. aren't there aren't many teachers still here from those days, but Mr. Mason is still here. Mr. Binney, you also mentioned they're still here, so they'd be delighted to see you, I'm sure. And um, 
I, I, I was particularly wanting me to mention mention him to you and and remember him to you because he was um, he's got fond memories as well of of the caving days. The uh, the one thing I do what, what I, I'm very jealous of the school lunches that I've seen on Instagram recently. Oh yes, <laughs> I, it's completely different from the sort of the the pie. The sort of the chocolate pudding that we chocolate sponge pudding that we used to have <laughs> very significant upgrade from those days yes it's really good now um so yeah we, we have a we have a, a the whole ride how come and do it and that they're, and they're really taking it to the next level so it's it's really good yeah quite different to the still in the same place but quite a different experience i think it's fair. <laughs> oh. um, thank you thank you so much it's been absolutely brilliant to talk to you keep in touch and let us know how you're getting on with with the next stage of of your brilliant career good luck to your daughters in their education as okay. well but look after yourself and, and do come and visit us. All Ladies best. and gentlemen, Dave Cross, thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.